Why hello there, and welcome back to my sample series, where I showcase games running on either the PlayStation 4 Pro or the Xbox One X in 4K and or HDR. This week I'm doing Ori in the World of Wisp. This is the second part of these videos uh, that I'm posting, and this one is going to showcase uh, sort of a nearly complete save game of me just exploring the environments, showcasing what the variety of um, locale that this game has to offer in all of its 4K and HDR glory at 60 frames a second at roughly 40 megs a second um, bitrate. I'm going to be picking up at my newly completed save file here. My first part I showed the intro to the game and now I'm going to show not the end but just before the end. And I'll do my best to explain um apparently it's giving me that achievement now strange but whatever i'll do my best to explain what's going on here now in the first part the first video i did you mainly just saw very dark, gloomy areas. Here I hope to showcase the larger variety of, um, of stuff that this game has to offer. And it has a large variety of it. As an example, huh. let me show you the map you'll get an idea as to what I'm talking about here. It's a big map, as you can see. Yeah, it's a big map. And it does have dungeons, just like the first game. We got the triple jump here. numerous abilities like the ability to gravitate towards basically blue objects like this including this moss this is entrance to one of the dungeons as you can see I have a lot more health and energy available to me an energy cell fragment, something I missed. Okay. I do believe I have most of the abilities unlocked, if not all of them, at this point. Alright, let's go to... Hmm. Let's go east. Let's take a look at the map for a reference. I can showcase the snowy areas of this game. And yes, this game does have a fast travel ability, which is something the first game did not have. At least I don't think it did. You can fast travel from anywhere, but you can only fast travel to specific parts of the specific points in the map. Got this big bear here. This is a bear that I woke up from its dark from its deep slumber ah the warmth of spring spring is finally springing where I live in northern suburbs of Detroit 
and it's finally getting out of the 40s and into the 50s and 60s, which is good. Uh, these things will try to eat you if you stay on them too long, like that. Same thing with those. Those kind of reminds me remind me of those plants that hung from the ceiling in the Half Life series. Being very reckless already. As you can see, I like to stick with this starting weapon here that you get at near the beginning of the game as my primary. It's generally how I roll with this. I'm going to showcase a different environment now. I'm going to showcase the desert. You can fast travel specifically to these points right here. You should know that when you're fast traveling, that's when the game is most likely to experience visual glitches and such. And it's at its most perky jerky as well, in its performance as well. This is how you refill your energy meter. Here you got the tunneling ability. New to this game, obviously. Definitely a major part of some of the later uh, difficult sequences, including one really annoying chase sequence that almost uh, damaged my opinion of this game because of how bad it was. But thankfully, it wasn't. I was able to get through it with enough effort. As you can see, there's a thing up there that I want to try to get if I can. First, I'm gonna have to deal with this guy. I can't necessarily remember why I didn't get this thing before, but hopefully I'll be able to figure it out here and not spend too much time on it. I want to get it so you dash just right just before you break the surface to give you maximum um, height potential. After I think I know what I'm supposed to do. Let's see if I can remember how to do it though. This thing right here. And 
No. Let's try that again. Look at that. Another energy cell fragment. And thanks to that, I now have more energy. Let's set this back on the ability I like, which is healing. I can remember what it is. Here we go. And it's heal up. Show you what that looks like. Unlike in the first game, you do not manually create save points. The game auto saves uh, fairly frequently enough. Um, it's pretty good about that. This guy's annoying. Thankfully, I have an, a long enough health bar that I can just sort of lazily take that thing on and not have to worry about it much, but ideally, I should have put in more of an effort there. Which I already pulled. Yeah, here's the desert area. Let's see if I can find another interesting spot to go to. How about if I show you the Luma Pools? This might be the best looking area in the game, at least in my opinion. And hopefully you'll be able to see why. It's also one of the most annoying areas to try to um, explore and uh, transit, make your way through. Like I said in the first video, you do get the ability to breathe underwater. This is a demonstration of that. Ah. In this area, I had to manipulate the dire direction and flow of these bubbles here in order to platform to s certain spots. Now I don't have to do that anymore because of the fact I have more abilities at my disposal. Like that. We need to gravitate towards those blue lamps. Whatever they are. Yeah, I mean, just look at this. I, I especially love the way water looks in this game. You jump on those bubbles, it bounces you up in the air. It's just water everywhere. Get out of here, fish. Yes, water wheels like this are definitely part of the puzzle, puzzly elements in this game part that makes it a puzzle platformer to an extent. Secret area. Well, yeah, this is just such a lush, gorgeous looking game. to another area. Here's what the, what the map looks like when you zoom all the way out. Let's showcase the depths here. Show you pretty much the polar opposite of this area.
But yeah, I don't know if I've emphasized it enough. This is one good-looking game, and I, it's also a joy to play. It just controls so smoothly and fluidly. I would highly recommend this game to anyone who has an Xbox One or a reasonably recent PC. Especially if you have a good 4K and HDR television or monitor. I am playing this on a 55-inch uh, OLED TV from LG. I got about two years ago now. And it looks just so... It looks really nice. Got this annoying spider thing shooting stuff. Clearly, I'm not doing a particularly good job of fighting it, but whatever. This is where the spiders live. a spider that was controlled by some sort of parasite type creature that you had to fight in order to free it. Yes, these energy things do respawn and allow you to harvest their energy if you are low on it. Thankfully, I am not. Another one of these annoying spiders. I'll see if I can just avoid it for the moment. Alright. With that, we can pull these things out. Kind of look like blue asparagus, but... They work. As you can see, we have this feather here for gliding. These mosquitoes, these glowing mosquitoes, were very helpful in navigating this, your way through this area because, as you might observe from my daily long play stream of this game, this area is shrouded in darkness that killed you if you were too far away from light for too long. I like that one level in um, Dead Cells, actually. I don't know if you know what level I'm talking about. I should probably heal up. This is a challenge that you can do. Beat the time, but I'm not going to attempt that. Instead, I'm going to showcase what is generally considered to be home base. This is where the Mokis live. Spend some time. This will probably be the last area that I get to show, but we'll see. We'll see. Did I mention how much I like this game? I really like this game, and it's an early favorite for my game of the year this year. Granted, I've only played this and Doom Eternal, which should be next week's 4K HDR upload. You can view projects that you can do. You need these shards to complete. As you can see, I have 
six of them done, and I need ten shards to do the last one. I only have two. <laughs> but I'll show around here. Got the Moki. This is where they live. And the projects you work on basically improve this area, including growing this tree, which um, is where I got one of my abilities. I can't rightfully remember which one, though. This is a guy we helped out from the desert. Oh, yeah, this is, uh, he planted the seed. It grew into the plant, he planted the seed that grew into that tree. This is a guy that sells you stuff. Shards and upgrades. As you can see, I got well, one of them anyway. Now you can only have a certain number of shards equipped at a time. And while a number of these seem really useful, you have to bear in mind that you have to unequip a shard that you're already using to use them. You can also use this guy to upgrade your existing shards. Let me show you what I have here. These are the ones I am using at the moment. Triple jump. This replenishes more energy when this replenishes energy when dealing melee damage. This gives you 30% more health. This causes orbs from float away from much further away. Float towards you from much further away. This deals 50% of damage taken back to enemies, melee damage. This causes you to take 30% less damage, gain 3 additional energy cells, and bonus damage up to 6,000 spirit light. So how much, and basically how much currency you have gets to turn into bonus damage. This is basically my boss fighting ability stuff. As I had this to get ready for the boss fight. This is good for exploring, for those of you who want to 100% the game. Arrows here. You know what some of these look like. Yep, yeah. costs energy to use. This creates a sentry form of butterflies that automatically attack nearby enemies. This sets thing on sets things on fire. This blows things away with a gust of wind as one of the ways of um, dealing with those bubbles, manipulating them for platforming purposes. I already showed that. This is a good weapon to have on Y. Because it's basically a heavy attack. I already showed you the launch. Here's the spirit arrow. Useful for, um, required, in fact, for some puzzle platforming sequences. Yeah. Actually, go into some of these buildings, and they often contain secrets, usually in the form of currency. <laughs> All right, so. 
Hopefully I've given you at least a good idea. Oh, I should show you the seed guy if he's still around. There's the bird I showed we met in the first video. These bounce plant pads are planted by this um, guy over here. I believe I helped him with all of his um, seed projects. That's good. And here is the home of the map maker. I did not get to show this character off in the first video, but he's often been compared to a character in a game called Hollow Knight, where he uh, basically assembles maps for you if you give him money. In this, you can purchase maps that show you location of all the energy cells, all the life cells, and all the shards. So if I wanted to, I could just grind out currency to find the ways I need to 100% this game. But as you can see, it's pretty expensive. And I don't have nearly enough currency for even one of those, let alone all of them. Let me see if I can find one more area to show off that might potentially be interesting. Oh, I already did that. Reach and the depths of the ink water marsh. This is one of the areas that I was not able to do. A specific uh, challenge, a specific uh, quest, unfortunately, because I could just not, I just wasn't able to figure it out. See, it's dark and murky down here, as you would expect from a swamp. This is the challenge I was never able to figure it out. All right? No, not this. This is a combat trying I've completed. That's how you uh, get the ability to have more abilities, more ability slots. Yeah, I can show off this thing. Get the big thing here. Actually, while we I show off these things, I think they will be more interesting. Almost at the half hour mark. So while I'm doing this, I'm just going to take a moment and thank you so much for watching. I appreciate when people take time out of their day to watch my streams and videos and such. Just as a quick reminder, I do a daily long play stream almost every day at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time from Sunday through Thursday. I'm currently doing Ninja Guide in Black on the Xbox One via backwards compatibility. And I do a retro stream on Monday night at 8 p.m a modern stream on Wednesday night at 11 p.m., and 4K and or HDR uploads like this on Fridays that typically publish on Saturday, Saturday morning.
And as soon as I complete this challenge, I'm going to put a stop to this later video. I can probably go a little bit over a half an hour, but not much. And there it is. That's what a combat shrine looks like. I've already completed this one, so I wasn't going to get anything new from it. Well, yeah, like I said, thank you so much for watching, and until next time, take it easy.